Welcome back, my name is Kerry, and today I'm gonna tell you how floating mobile home parks might be a great affordable housing option. On my channel, I talk primarily about manufactured homes. However, I'm open to talking about anything as long as it has to do with affordable housing and I think it's interesting. I was talking to my father-in-law, Kevin, a few weeks ago and knowing my profession, he referred to his current living situation as a floating mobile home park. That comment really got my hamster wheel turning and I knew right away I had to look at it closer. What I found was his current setup as more of a mobile home park than an actual mobile home park and could absolutely be a very cool affordable housing option. What I'm talking about is living full-time on a sailboat in a marina. Think about it, you own the boat, you rent the space, and the home itself is actually way more mobile than a manufactured home. So I sent him an email with a list of questions asking the ins, outs, ups and downs of living in a floating mobile home park. And I think this concept is one of the most interesting ideas I've heard in a while with some added benefits that you don't see with tiny homes or manufactured homes. What I'm gonna do is tell you some of the real costs involved, highlight some of the downsides, and tell you why I think this way of life might be trending in the next few years so let's do it. After first referencing a marina as a floating mobile home park, we didn't talk about it for a few weeks, but in my head I had a feeling that a lot of the misconceptions about manufactured homes in mobile home parks applied to marinas as well. Most people assume that manufactured homes purchased in a mobile home park lose their value. However, that definitely isn't always the case. Most people, myself included, also think that boats always lose their value, but I was surprised to find out that that isn't always the case. Kevin and Carla bought their first sailboat, a 1989 Canadian Sailcraft 36 called Sapphire, for $62,000. Comparable in price to a small manufactured home. The Sailcraft is 11 by 36, falling just under the upper limit of what's considered a tiny home, if we're going by land standards. Sapphire had two bedrooms, one bathroom, and after owning it for three years, they were able to sell it for $76,000, a $14,000 profit. Where it really gets interesting, though, is the similarities between marinas and mobile home parks. Before they pushed off from Vancouver, they were residents of the Spruce Harbor Marina, a 10 minute walk from Granville Island, and the pad rent was $15 per foot. So for a boat like Sapphire, we're talking about $540 per month, and that includes a city sewer hookup, water, basic cable, and electricity. $540 per month for waterfront in downtown Vancouver. There's an elementary school across the street, and it's a 10 minute walk to the nearest SkyTrain. Not bad. Compare that to a one-bedroom laneway suite that's $1,475 per month, not on the water, and 56 square feet smaller. This whole boat thing might be starting to make sense. Where do I sign up, right? Not so fast, sailor. Just like mobile home parks, most of the good marinas are full. The Spruce Harbor Marina in Vancouver has a 10-year waiting list. Okay, so apparently I'm not the first person to realize this is a sweet setup, but just like mobile home parks, there is a way around the wait list. For me to find a spot to put a new manufactured home usually means buying something existing for as cheap as I can and either trying to sell it to be moved or demolishing it if it's beyond repair. That way I don't have to wait for the park to develop new lots or for someone to move a home out, which almost never happens. I'm not sure if the same rule applies for every marina, but at Spruce Harbor, you can sell your boat with the slip and the buyer effectively cuts 10 years off their move-in date. So that's exactly what Kevin and Carla did. They bought a boat in the marina that they didn't want, immediately turned around and sold it, paid the co-op fee, and kept the space for their own boat. This does two things for them as liveaboard sailors. First, they have a place they can park their boat that's in the city for less than they can rent on land that they can live and work. Second, they have more to sell if and when they decide to trade their life jackets in and move ashore. A sailboat for sale in a marina with a space will sell for more than a sailboat with nowhere to go. I know this to be true because he told me he took a bath on the sale of the boat they bought for the space just like I do when I buy a manufactured home to be moved out. It's the exact same thing. Sometimes I even have to pay to get rid of a manufactured home, but I know I can make it up on the other end because it's the space that holds the value and that applies to water and land. 
Pop quiz, what are you going to do with a manufactured home if you don't have anywhere to put it? The same thing you're going to do with a sailboat you want to live on if you can't get a space for it. Nothing. They're pretty much useless if they have nowhere to go. Unless you just want to sail around on your boat, then technically I guess you don't need anything. If you can get in, the floating mobile home park concept sounds too good to be true. So what's the catch? The catch is, it's a boat, and boats require a lot more maintenance than a house. If you look up the meaning of the word boat, it stands for bust out another thousand, because stuff is always breaking. They say the two happiest days of a boat owner's life are the day they buy the boat and the day they sell it. If you're a handy person, which on their boat seems like Carla is, it wouldn't be as big of a deal as it would be for someone who isn't, like me. My ability to fix things on a boat is very limited, so anytime anything went wrong, it would be very expensive to fix. However, the 10-year waiting list to get into Spruce Harbor proves there are more than enough people who want to enjoy this lifestyle. So who are they? I asked Kevin what kind of people live on their boats in the marina, and his answer surprised me. He said in Spruce Harbor, there was approximately a 50-50 split between working and retired. Of the people working, many were families, with kids ranging in age from newborns to teens. So this really is a lifestyle appealing to a variety of people. Kevin and Carla have transitioned from those working while living in the marina to being retired and since then have really put the mobile in mobile home. Here's the thing, a manufactured home in a mobile home park is far from mobile. Can it be moved? Yeah, sure it can, but it's going to take a couple days to get it ready and then cost thousands to move. Sailboats are the real mobile homes. Since retiring, they've literally put thousands of nautical miles behind them, and now they're enjoying even more affordable floating mobile home parks in the tropics. Right now, they're located in Panama in a marina that charges $13 per foot. So for a boat like Sapphire, we'd be looking at $468 per month. Seems pretty reasonable to be living in paradise. This is a potential trend I can see picking up momentum as a lot of jobs have transitioned to working from home over the last 18 months. Think about it, if you work from home, would you rather live in Vancouver and pay $14.75 for a 340 square foot laneway house or live in the tropics for $468 per month. I realize a sailboat isn't going to be for everyone, but I can see this appealing to work from homers with a sense of adventure. It's like van life on steroids. From the outside looking in, floating mobile home parks look like a really cool, somewhat affordable housing option. If work from home stays around, I think this will be a trend that those seeking some adventure will want to explore. And I don't think work from home is going away anytime soon. The reason for posting this video right now is we're going to visit Kevin and Carla on their new boat SV Gargoyle to give life in a floating mobile home park a try for a couple weeks because we haven't seen them in over two years. So stay tuned for an update and boat tour. That's all I've got for today. If you like floating mobile home park videos, make sure to subscribe to their channel because they've got new ones coming out every single week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.